Pedro, Miss Zulnick, are you all right? Well, yes, I guess so, Doctor. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, my problem is intimacy. Being a celebrity has made it really difficult to have sexual relationships. Uh-huh. Go on. I think that most men are intimidated by me being a beautiful and powerful woman in the industry. And, of course, the tabloids. How does that make you feel? Well, I guess it makes me feel like a lonely curse. You see, Doctor, I'm used to having lots of great sex with lots of different men. Doctor, are you married? I'm not sure whether you're really asking if I'm married. Let's talk about it a little more so we can understand why that information is important to you. Continue. Doctor, it's just that you're such an overwhelmingly attractive man. I just can't resist your charms. Oh, my. That is truly remarkable. Let's go on. When was the last time you had intercourse? Oh, Doctor, it's been so long. I say it has to at least have been a week. I met this guy, Michael Todd, at a party or something like that. Michael Todd Boyer. I don't remember his name. Something like that. Michael Todd. Very interesting. Did you enjoy the intercourse with this Mr. Boyer? Well, I guess so, except for this one really embarrassing thing. Can you tell me more about that? Well, you see, we were in the middle of making love, and my stomach was slightly upset. It could have been that bowl of chili I had for lunch, or maybe it was the burrito, but I knew something was wrong. I felt like I had to scream extra loud. Oh! Oh! Oh, Michael Todd, you're so good! You're so good! And then it happened. I don't know, I was so embarrassed, it was horrible. Oh, God, it was terrible. I can imagine how that must have made you feel. Oh, yes, Doctor, it was quite a release. A real long one, it felt like it went on for days. Yes, I'm sure it was. But what I was really referring to was the embarrassment you must have experienced. Fortunately, Michael Todd didn't make a big stink out of it, though he never did call. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Hedra. Uh, Hedra, I was wondering, do you practice safe sex? Well, you mean use condoms? Yes. I always say safe sex or no sex. Well, Hedra, thank you for sharing all that with me today. I know that must have been very difficult for you, but I assure you, it will be far easier for you to talk in the future. Doctor, did I tell you I can contort myself into the shape of a pretzel? Oh my, that is truly remarkable. I hope we can share more next week at the same time. Me too, Doctor. I'm looking forward to it. Bye-bye. Thank you. Won't you please make yourself comfortable? Oh, sure, Doctor. My, what a lovely office you have here. And this ashtray, it's purely exquisite. You look awfully familiar to me. Oh, who do you think I look like? An old girlfriend of yours or something? Maybe you know me from Bingo. My name is Dr. Kozlov. And what is your name? Uh, hiya, sweetheart. My name is Ruby Schmelzi. No offense, but I really didn't want to come see you here today. You see, Michael Todd, shall we say, recommended that I come here and speak with you about this little problem I had. He said that if I didn't come speak with you and get some counseling, he'd be forced to call the authorities and press charges against me for shoplifting. Could you imagine? 
little old me shoplifting? Let's move on. What seems to be the problem? Well, you see, Doctor, I was shopping at Sophie's five and dive. This little long nosed twerp came up to me and tapped me on the shoulder. He said, Excuse me, ma'am. My name is Michael Todd Boyer. I work for security here at Sophie's Five and Dime. Would you please empty the contents of your purse on the counter? Empty the contents of my purse on the counter? Why, whatever for? What are these? So let me get this straight. What you're really trying to tell me is that you were caught stealing from Sophie's Five and Dime? Caught stealing from Sophie's Five and Dime? Doctor! Doctor, can I offer you a piece of candy? Come on. Take your pick, any flavor you'd like, but except this green one. I started this one in the waiting room. Hmm. I mean condoms. Are you sure you don't want to play with condoms, Doctor? Come on, take Never your Never mind that. Can you please tell me why you felt the need to steal those condoms? Honestly? Yes, Mrs. Feldstein. Honestly. Honestly, Doctor. I don't know why I stole those damn condoms. I sure as hell don't need them. Listen, Doc. I'm 72 years old. What else am I going to do for fun? Have sexual intercourse all day long? Listen, Doc, I'll make you a deal. You fuck me, and I'll stop stealing. What do you say? Mrs. Schultze, I'm sorry, but that's all the time we're going to have for this week. That's it? I'm on the verge of making a major breakthrough, and you tell me we're out of time? Well, yes. I'm afraid so. It was a pleasure meeting you, Mrs. Schultze. I hope to see you again next week so we may discuss this further. Yeah, I uh, just got an awful sweet tooth. I gotta go anyway. Uh, Mrs. Feldstein, my ashtray, please. Sorry, Doc. Old habits are so hard to break. Bye-bye, Doc. Dr. Kozlov. And what is your name? Cindy. Cindy, why do you think you're here today? Well, my mom says that I'm crazy. She thinks that just because she can't see my friend Michael Todd, it means that he doesn't exist. I don't know why she doesn't like him. He didn't mean to overflow the bathtub or break the heel of her shoe. Sometimes he just does bad things. I don't know. Cindy, now that was certainly a, a believable reason for you to be here today. But my instincts and many years of private practice tell me that there is something critically wrong with your perception of reality. Do you understand what I'm implicating? Yeah. I bet you think that if Michael Todd doesn't start behaving himself, Mom will think that I'm the one doing all that bad stuff. No, not exactly. Cindy, can you tell me what Michael Todd looks like? Well, he's got a big long nose and bushy eyebrows and he's skinny. 